So you've heard of Airtable, the game-changing platform that has reinvented how we organize our data. But are you using it to its full potential? Trust me, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all its features. But guess what? Today, I'm going to simplify it for you by showing you how to build a task manager all within Airtable. We are going to split this up into three parts. We'll begin with a setup phase where we will set up our database, create the table, and add all the fields to track our tasks. Then we will create something known as a filtered view where we will be able to split up our task into done and pending. And finally, in part three, we are going to create something known as a list view, which is going to make our task manager a lot more user-friendly. And with that, it's time to roll up our sleeves. So here I am in my Airtable account, all logged in and ready to go. So the first thing you need to do when you start a new project in Airtable is to create a new base. A base is essentially short for a database. And the way you do that is by clicking on this button called create a base on top right. So let's go ahead and do that now. So once we click on this button, it takes us to a new page, which is essentially an empty database with some default tables and fields. And once you first land here, you will notice you are presented with a bunch of different options and templates and menus, which can be a bit overwhelming. So what I recommend doing is getting rid of all of it and cleaning up the workspace before we start creating our project, in our case, the task manager. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this menu on the right. And with those menus out of the way, the next thing we need to do is to name our database and the tables that are going to be necessary for our project. So currently it is set to untitled base. And once you click on this name, it opens up a new menu where you can type the name that you want to give your database. So I'm going to call it a task manager. And while I'm here, I'm also going to change the color of this space. I'm going to change it to purple. And then also you can assign an icon, which makes it easy to locate a given database once the list of databases grows within your Airtable account. So let's go ahead and click on the checkbox icon because we are building a task manager and feel free to choose the one that you find more appropriate, of course. So once we click on that, the name of the database is updated, the color looks good, and we have an icon to make our database easy to find later on. All right, so with that, we can turn our attention to the table within our database. We only have one table, which is fine because for our simple task manager, all we need is a single table. To a full-blown project manager, we are going to be introducing more tables down the road, but for now, it is just going to be a simple task manager with one table. And this table is essentially to store all the information that we need to track for our tasks. And that's why it makes sense to rename the table to the tasks table. And the way you do that is by clicking on the name of the table, which is going to bring up a similar menu, just like the one we saw when we clicked on the name of the database up top. And in this case, we have an option called rename table, click on that option and change it to tasks. So once the name is updated, hit save. And now you can see our table is successfully updated. Very good. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is set up the table. And by default, this table comes with four fields. And this is how a database is different from a spreadsheet. And I do have a dedicated video that goes into the details of spreadsheet versus databases, which I'll leave in the description below. And I do recommend checking that out if you're not already familiar with the concept of databases when compared to spreadsheets. But for now, all you need to know is that instead of columns and rows, what we have is fields and records. And unlike spreadsheet, where you can type whatever data you want in a given column, in databases, you need to select what kind of data each field is going to store. And it is all going to make sense in a minute when we start adding the fields for our task manager. But first thing what we need to do is get rid of the fields that Airtable added for us by default. And the way you do that is by clicking on this little icon next to the name of the field, which brings up this menu. And the very last option on this menu is called delete field. So let's go ahead and click on that. And I am going to get rid of all the fields and start from scratch, just so we have a blank canvas and we can argue and think about the fields that we need to store our tasks. The only field that you cannot delete is this first field, which is also known as a primary field. And we are going to leave that alone for now as if it doesn't even exist. And we'll come back to it later once everything else has been successfully set up. 
Okay, so now we literally are at a blank canvas and it is time to start adding the fields that we need to track our tasks. So the first field that we need is to be able to track our actual task or the description of the task. So let's go ahead and add that now. And the way you add a new field is by clicking on this plus icon here, which says add field. And once you click on that icon, it brings up this list. And essentially this list is of different types of field that Airtable supports. So it could be a text field, it could be a number field, it could be a date field and so on and so forth. So in our case, currently we need to add a field that is going to help us store the description of our tasks. So we are just going to look for a field called text. And when you type text, it is filtered down to either a long text or a single line text. Since we only need to be able to type a small description of our tasks, we are going to go with the single line text and we are going to give this field a name and we'll just call it the description. You don't need to type task description because the table is already task stable. By virtue of this table being called tasks, all the fields under that table are assumed to be related to that given task. So all you need to do is name this field description and the way you read it is by saying task description because the name of the table is tasks. Okay, so create the field. So our description field is now successfully created. And of course you can resize the field according to how much space you need. Okay, so now let's move on to the second field. So in addition to the description of the task, we also need to be able to track the status of the task, whether it is done or not. So for that, again, we are going to click on the add field button and look for a field called status. But there is no such field as status, but there is a field called checkbox, which essentially allows you to check the task on or off or set it to yes or no, essentially indicating whether the task is done or not. So we click on the checkbox field and we will name this field as done. So checked means the task is done, unchecked means the task is not done. So let's go ahead and create that field. All right, the next thing we need in addition to the status of the task and the description is to be able to track whether the task is high priority, medium priority or low priority. So again, we'll click on the add field button and look for a field called priority, which again does not exist because it is not something that is supported by your table out of the box. Uh, because Airtable gives you the building blocks and then you use those building blocks to build whatever you need to build. But what Airtable does provide is something known as a select field. And this is very similar to a dropdown on any particular app or website. So let's go ahead and select this. And we are going to name this field priority. And notice it gives me an option to add a few options to this field. And basically these options will end up becoming the options within your dropdown once you use the task manager. So I'm going to add three options here. I'm going to add high, medium, and low to indicate different types of priorities that I can assign to my tasks. There we go, and hit on create field. And now the priority field is successfully created. And finally, what we need is a date field to track the due date of the task. So once again, click on the add field button and look for a date field. And date field, of course, is supported by default. So we select that and name the field as due date. And of course, this field, you can have multiple date fields. You can have one for a start date, you can have one for end date, and so on and so forth. But for us, for now, we're just going to keep it simple and have one field called the due date field. And there's other options that you can select, but for now, I'm just going to leave everything as default. And let's go ahead and click on the create field button. All right, very good. So those are the four fields that we need, the description, the, the done field, the priority field, and the due date field. And once you have all these fields in here, uh, what you can also do is you can move around these fields according to your preference. So typically in a task manager, I like to move the done field to all the way to the left, just to recreate that similar uh, look and feel that you get in a typical task manager app. And then you have the description field and then priority and due date, which can stay wherever they are. Okay. so. Remember how I said, let's ignore the name field, which we cannot delete. So what are we going to do about that? What are we going to store in that field? Thankfully, we don't have to store anything manually in that field. What we can do is automatically assign all the tasks a task ID. And the way you do that is by clicking on this field, and then you can go into the edit field option where you can change the type of this field. And one of the types, uh, just like we have been selecting other types for the other fields, one of the types that Airtable supports out of the box is known as auto number. So notice what happens when I select on this field, click save, 
all the rows or all the records in this table will automatically get an ID assigned to them by Airtable. So once I add a new record, it will automatically get a new ID and I don't have to manually worry about adding this data anymore. And you can get creative with this field and you can use some formulas to combine a bunch of different fields and create a unique record ID for this particular field. So that's totally up to you. But for now, we're just going to keep it as an auto number and that is going to get the job done for our task manager. Very good. So now we have all the fields that we need to be able to use our task manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch over to ChatGPT and I'm going to ask it to create some dummy data for us. So to use ChatGPT in this case, all we need to tell it is the name of our fields, which is done, description, priority, and due date. Okay, so let's move over to ChatGPT. And here I'm going to type create 10 dummy tasks for your table with fields done, which is a checkbox. So we do need to tell it the type of the field so it can give us the right kind of data. Description, which is text. Then we have a priority. And I'm going to tell it the different options that I have in my dropdown. So I'll say high, medium, low. And then finally, we have a due date field. And I'm going to hit enter. While it does its thing, I'm going to switch back over to Airtable and actually show you how you can add your tasks manually. So you will leave the done field alone, of course, and you're going to start here with the description field. So we'll say this is a test task. And then when you move over to the priority field, notice how you get a dropdown of different options. So I'm going to select a high priority for this one, and then I'm going to select a date. And notice when I click on the date field, it is actually going to give me a calendar, which makes it very easy to select a date compared to a spreadsheet where you have to manually enter it and then format it. So let's go ahead and click on today's date. And then what you can do once the task is done is that you can actually check the box, which will indicate that this particular task is done. And this is going to come in handy in our next part where we are going to create different views for done tasks and pending tasks. Okay, so let's switch over to ChatGPT and see how it did. Now notice it created the task in a list, but this is going to be very hard for me to copy over. So what I'm going to say or tell it to do is please give them to me in a table format. And now it is going to convert these tasks in a table format and let's wait for it to be done. All right, so it is now done creating the task. I did have to go back and modify the prompts a little bit so that I can get the data in the format that I need. Uh, so now we can just copy this data and move back to your table. And once I come here, I'm going to enter paste and it is going to ask me whether you want to expand the table, meaning create new records for the data that is coming in. Because currently we only have four entries here, which are empty, but I'm bringing in 10 tasks. So it is asking me to create seven more records, which I'm totally okay with. So I'm going to hit continue and voila. Now we have a bunch of tasks in here with some dummy data. Some of them are done, some of them are not done, and it has varying priorities, low, medium, and high, and a bunch of different due dates. Very good. So that is all we need in terms of setting up the table. But now if you notice, the data is all over the place. My done and pending tasks are mixed. Uh, my priorities are all over the place. And then the due date makes no sense. Uh, they're not in any particular order. To fix that problem, uh, there are several ways. But the first thing you can do is you can use the sort option within the table. So you can sort by any field that you want. So for example, I can sort by the due date field which then sorts my tasks by the upcoming due date, starting with today's date and then going further. Or you can sort the tasks by the done field, which will then separate the pending task and the done task. And notice that it is still not very user friendly. And that brings us to part two, which is to create a separate view for the done task and a separate view for the pending task. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to open this menu here on top left called the views menu. And I'm going to create a new view uh, from the options given below. For now, I'm just going to select the grid view, which is the default view. It is the same view that we see here. So let's click on the plus icon and I'm going to name this view as done tasks. So once I hit create new view, another uh, entry is created within this views list here on the left. And uh, it is called done tasks. 
but currently they're exactly the same. So the grid view shows me the same data as well as the done tasks. So it doesn't really solve any problem. But the way you fix that is by adding a filter to this particular view. So given that this is our done task view, I'm going to use the filter option here and I'm going to add a condition that tells it only show me tasks which are set to done. And once we check that box there, we see that we only see our done tasks here. So now that we know how to create a new view from the existing data, we can create another view. And in this time, I'm going to call this the pending tasks and click on create new view. And again, we started with the default data, but now I'm going to use the reverse filter, which is I'm going to tell it to only show me tasks that are not done. So we just leave that box unchecked and notice now that we only see our pending tasks. So if you go back to the grid view, we see all the tasks. And uh, for example, right now I have the number three as not done. So I'm going to select, I'm going to actually check it off just to see if our views work correctly. So click on this. And now if I go to the done task view, I should see the number three task as well. And I do. And it should be automatically removed from the pending task because it is no longer pending. Very good. So that is how you create the, the done task view and the pending view. And you can do further modifications with, within these views. For example, I can come to the pending task view and sort my task by the due date so that I see them in ascending order. So then I see the nearest one on the top and you can do a bunch of other options within this view as well. All right, so that's the done task and pending task. And with that, we can move on to part three, which is to create a list view of our tasks. So I've already shown you how to create different views from your existing data, but so far we have only been working with one kind of view, which is the grid view, which is essentially like a spreadsheet view. But notice how here on the bottom left, we have different types of views that we can leverage. And again, when you create a new view, it doesn't copy the data over. All it does is creates a new representation of the existing underlying data. So you change the data in one place, it is changed across all the different views. So for the task manager, the view that makes the most sense is known as the list view. And of course, you can feel free to experiment with the other views as well, but I'm going to show you the list view just to give you an idea of how that works and how you can customize the representation of your data within your table. So let's go ahead and create a list view by clicking on the plus button next to the list option. And maybe we can name this a to-do list. So let's go ahead and click on the create new view button. And notice that it did create a new view, but it is not showing me any data right now. All it is showing me is the auto IDs of all the tasks. Uh, so we can fix that easily by clicking on the customize rows button here. And essentially we need to go here and, and enable all the types of data that we want to see in this particular view. So definitely I want to see the done field. I want to see the description. Actually, I do want to see all of them. So I'm just going to enable all of them. In fact, I'm going to disable the, the name field because I don't really care about the number of the task. All I want is whether the task is done or not. Okay, so there we go. And we can resize this just to make it more user-friendly. So now you can see that this is, almost looking like an app. Uh, this is no longer a spreadsheet. This is no longer a grid. It almost looks like a to-do list app, right? And what you can do now is you can also sort this by the done field, just like we sorted in the other views. And it is going to then show me only the pending task up top. And as soon as I click on something, it is going to get moved down with the other tasks. So that is how you create a list view and you can do further customization. You can change the size of the rows. You can add some prefix and things like that. Uh, but essentially what you have now is almost like a to-do list app. We started off with this simple table. We added all the different fields to it. And then we created a view for done tasks. We created a view for pending tasks. And then finally, we created a list view, which almost makes it look like a to-do list app. And remember, we did all of this without leaving this tab. We did leave it for chat GPT, but we did all of this within here table. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how to get started with Airtable, leverage different views and options, and build your own task manager. So we are going to stop here for this one, and I'll see you next time.